Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I am leaving the theater. Well, I've left the theater. I'm in my car. I'm on my way to, well, home. But um, I've just seen The Outfit, um, which is a new movie with Mark Rylance and Dylan O'Brien and Zoe Dooch, whatever. Um, and a uh, pretty solid movie. Um, I'm going to spoil it which, um, for something like this, could impact viewing of the movie. Like, for me, having a Marvel movie spoiled doesn't impact enjoyment. Like, in the same way that me reading a book and then going to see an adaptation of said book doesn't doesn't impact my enjoyment of said movie. Um, Because it is, you know, it's, it's... it's not dependent on you not knowing something and then the unfolding of twists and turns um, changes it. Like, in, like, the Batman, when they did, the like, for the Batman, like, there are twists around what's going on with the Riddler and all of that, but it's not like, you know, it, it, like, oh, by the way, they catch the Riddler at the end, or, oh, by the way, the Penguin's in it, and, like, you know, oh, and, like, there's really nothing about that movie you can really spoil that would be like, oh, come on, really? Like, you know, there's there are spoilers for, like, um, Empire Strikes Back, where it's like, oh, by the way, you know that, you know, Vader was Luke's father, and it's like, you know, that would hamper enjoyment. I don't think that there's anything that could really be done to spoil a lot of things, um, for, for most modern movies, this is one of those movies where it's like, you know what, we'll use Scream as an example, when we did Scream 5, um, we didn't really talk about, like, you know, who the killer was, um, and all of that, because, you know, it's a whodunit, and it's not a whodunit like Death on the Nile, where it's like, based on an Agatha Christie novel that's, you know, very, very old, so, you know, it, it, it's one of those things, so, Looking at, you know, the outfit, the outfit does have a lot going for it that you, you should wait until you see the movie to listen to this. In so much as there's only so long I can talk about the fact that the movie has, um, what's it called? The movie has, uh, um, what's the one I'm waiting for here? Um, um, It's all in one setting, and there are great, you know, there are great acting performances all around, and, you know, all of that, but really what I want to get into, and and the divisive part of the movie is going to be, A, the Boston, the the Chicago accents that riddle the movie, and also the execution around the twist. I feel like that's a big part of the movie that could not incense people, but could impact enjoyment. So if you want to hear about the twist and all of that, then continue listening. If not, pause it now, watch the movie, and then come back. It's going to be on premium VOD, I would say, within a month or two. Um, And then beyond that, it's like, okay, so... Or you can wait for it to go to, like, Peacock or whatever. It's a Comcast uh, Focus Features movie. So... Here's the problem with the movie, and we're going to put a spoiler warning here. So, the problem with the movie is, um, when you're putting a twist in, and you're trying to lighten something like this movie does, where it's kind of a whodunit, but I don't want to say it's a whodunit, it's more, like, we see a lot of what happened, but, like, the, it's a thriller is what it is. But, if you're watching a thriller, I'm a thriller, um is trying to lay out who's doing what, why they're doing, and all of that. The most important thing to to, to note about the, the 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 part of it is... Oh my god, why is it smelling like weed so bad? Um, the important thing to note is um, laying out the twist before it happens. It's not clever to have a movie running and not show us things and then act like, you know, you you pulled one over on us when it's like, well, no, there's no logistical reason why we didn't see that. 
It's just, you know, one of those, I think this movie might reward repeat viewing because of that. Because on your first viewing, when you're watching it in theaters, you're actively trying to figure out what's going on. And then when you get to the third act and they're revealing the sleight of hand, and that's what it is. By the time you read the end, it's this big, like, it's a sleight of hand reveal. It is, how did the magician do the trick? Um, but the problem is, I don't know if it's just me or if it's like, other people are going to bump into this too, where it's like, why is this, you know, why why is this movie not, it's not that it's, the problem is showing, like, not showing us things, but, like, it feels like they're showing, like, the, the timeline is a little wonky and a little confusing at times, where it's like, okay, so how long is it between scenes and, and what's going on? Because it feels like it's all happening kind of in real time, where there's no real point where you can point to and be like, oh, okay, so there's a time gap here. Like, I mean, I think there's one, and that would be, like, I, I guess any time he goes back to working, you'd be like, and time passed, but it's an indeterminate amount of time within a certain amount of time, but we're still accounting for Mark Rylance's, like, location and and everything during that time period. So, I don't know, it just, when we get to the third act, it's like, and here's how he did it. Here's how he, you know, pulled one over on everyone and all of that. It's like, okay, cool. But then, like... Here's the thing, too. I mean, the other thing that kind of bothers me is we don't get a clear understanding about... We don't get a clear understanding about who, um, why he does everything he does in this movie. Um, we understand that, you know, he's upset that his wife and, and daughter got killed in the fire, and we later find out that the fire was caused by someone who was working with an organized crime family before, and he lost everything because of that. And, and, okay, that's all cool and serviceable. That's pretty cool. But the problem is, there is no logical reason why he'd be like, oh, so I, like, you know, like, this whole thing that he does in this movie, like, it is to, you know, it's like, okay, he's observing and doing all of that, and it's like, I, I totally get all of that. But... It's like, it's all self-preservation is the biggest motivation that, from what I can figure out. Like, you know, um, um, Maddie, what was her name? No, Madge. She had an old lady name. I don't remember her name, but, um, Zoe Deutsch's, Deutsch's character, I think it's her name. But her character is, um, like, her motivation is she wants to leave Chicago. Like, we find out throughout the movie that she's got, like, ties to organized crime in Chicago, and she doesn't want to be party to that. She doesn't, she wants to get out of the shadow of her father, so she just wants to leave Chicago. That's her motivation for doing what she does. Like, the motivation for, um, what's it called? The motivation for, um, the, the head of the Boyle crime family is he wants to be able to join the outfit, which is this network of organized crime that was set up by the remnants of Al Capone's organization after he died, and it's, it, it's like, okay, so everyone has clear motivation, but the problem is that the whole thing is contingent on him, like, what's it called, him, um, him faking it to the boils, so that way the boils will go out of their way to start doing, like, it, like, is the movie trying to contend that he was making these decisions that we see throughout the movie? Like, is that, is, is that what, I, like, that's what I don't understand. Is it trying to contend that he, he did all of this so that way, uh, what's her name, can just leave? If that's what the movie's contending, then, okay, I can kind of buy that to an extent. I can kind of, like, I can understand that thought process. I can understand that, you know, that motivation kind of working. I, I just don't think that it, it quite is enough. Like, you know, especially considering say when we get to the end and we get to the scene where he, you know, he pulls up his sleeves, he's got all these tattoos, organized crime and military and all this other stuff, and he's like... You know, I, I, I don't want to be this person anymore. But, like, you know, to, like, to, to say that he is doing everything in this movie entirely on self-preservation is not correct. Because 
what we see him doing in this movie is, you know, he's acting kind of with regard, to, like, entirely to try and set out... I feel like I'm, I'm not explaining myself well, but, like, it's not clear why he's doing what he's doing from the beginning. Because before the movie even starts, you know, we see him in, what's it called? We see him setting up the, the, the fake outfit tapes. Like, okay, uh, there's a lot of things that kind of don't make sense about that, and it's like, it's kind of an important part of his character. Um, because that's what his character is supposed to be. His character is supposed to be, you know, like, I don't want any trouble. I, I, I'm, like, he, like, I think his character works better if he's someone who is, like, doing everything he does over the course of this movie. And at the end of it, he's like, I really just don't want trouble. Like, he, like, that's the thing. But you can't say you don't want trouble while actively causing the drama around you. It's like, it's just kind of silly to me. Where it's like, you know, I don't know. I, I, it just kind of feels weird that that whole, th they don't mesh those two personality types. And for them to both be in the same person feels a little weird. Um, but besides that, like, besides that whole issue, and then the third act where it's like, you know, kind of everything is wrapped up, and then he starts going to set the fire, and then the guy they shot is now not dead, and he's like, okay, I'm here to kill you and get revenge, because you ruined everything. That felt extra and tacked on, and if you listened to my review of the Batman on the night it came out, or me and Peter's discussion last week, you know how I feel about the third act of the Batman, where it kind of feels like it was tacked on. Um, like, for the Batman, it kind of worked for establishing the character going forward, but I don't think that it necessarily needed to be there. Um, like, it, it doesn't add anything to the movie to have it. In this case, especially, in this case, it, it kind of is like, it's silly almost that he's, that he's there and, and, and that, like, all of that add on to the character in the last, like, oh, and by the way, like, I, I really don't like that kind of rushed, like, oh, and we have to, here's a bunch of narrative groundwork we didn't lay before, but we're just gonna put it in now, and it's not even like it's answering a question that was begged and then not answered, it's just kind of information that wasn't needed, like, without that last scene, the movie works just as well. Like, if you take away that final reveal about, like, with the tattoos and, and, and what he was doing in his, in, in his past life, without any of, like, when that scene is happening, I'm like, and the guy, like, we see him twitching in an establishing shot, and I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. And then I'm thinking, like, oh. See, and that was the other thing that bugged me, too, is it's Chekhov's gun. Like, they go out of their way to show you that Dylan O'Brien had a gun in his, on his person when they shoved him into the, like, when he came in, like, they go out of their way to be like, oh, and here is, you know, him with the, like, he has a gun on his person, and, and it's like, it is there, and all of that, so there, there was a, and they keep pointing out where he is in the thing, and it's like, to do all of that, and then not acknowledge the gun, it isn't cre a creative choice, it's just kind of, it's a misdirect in the same way that saying that, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing John Harrison, not, um, not Khan is a misdirect, in, in, which is to say, it's not, it's saying, it, it is lying to the audience, by sitting there and pointing out the, you know, the gun, by pointing out where the body is, and where the body is in the room, and the thing is, we know the, sc the scale of the room, because we've seen, like, we've seen establishing shots that explain how big the room is, and we've been in the room literally the entire movie. Like, because we've been there the whole time, we know how big the room is and where the crate is that has the that has the body. And it's like, you're going to sit here and keep showing, like, the drip of blood out of the, out of the thing, and you're going to show us, like, all of these other things that go along with this crate that has the body that has a gun with bullets. And they go out of their way to point out multiple times that he has a gun and he did not fire a single bullet during the fight with the LaFontaines. And that's a big deal throughout the movie. They keep pointing out, like, oh, he didn't fire a single shot. He didn't fire a single shot. 
Meanwhile, we knew that what's his name fired, you know, had bullets in his gun because we knew he, like, we, we knew that he had, you know, shot because that's a plot point that, like, you know, like, it's just so silly to me that that was, you know, not handled in an eloquent way. Like, just don't show the gun in an establishing shot. Don't keep going back to where the body is. Once, especially once the dad, uh, the father has left, I don't need to keep seeing where the body is. I know where the body is. Like, what's it gonna do to, to know where the body is? And, and it's like, to keep being like, oh, there's a gun in there. That's the point of doing that. And to not use the gun, it, it you could have had the guy who was shot twice in the back and it was just kind of, you know, okay after doing that. Um, like, to, like, to have him be, like, doing everything he's doing, and that's the thing, too, this movie plays with, is, like, the idea that people get shot and are kind of okay right after, um, is kind of just silly to me, um, but, like, he gets shot, and he goes, you know, he gets shot twice in the back, and he, he's down for the count. He gets up, and he's still okay to fight, like, Again, what you could do is you could have it where, you know, they're stumbling around and he goes over, grabs the, you know, grabs the gun out of there and shoots him. And then that's the end of it. And it's like, we don't need to sit here and be like, I killed people with my bare hands. And like, well, what does that do? Like, it it doesn't do anything besides give us something for him to do so he can kill someone with the shears. It's just kind of silly to me. Um... So yeah, so we'll wrap up there for today. Um, I don't really have anything else to cover with this. Um, and I don't think there's really anything else, you know, to, to cover this weekend. Oh, I might do Keeper by the Dozen. I'm not sure yet. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, we'll wrap up there for today. And if I decide to watch Keeper by the Dozen, we will do that. Oh, DMZ. I gotta finish DMZ. Right. So I got those two. So with that, have a great rest of your weekend.